Welcome to this next video in our first session um, where you will learn the basics of SQL. So in the last video, in the last lesson, we looked at creating a table and inserting values into that table. However, however you might have noticed that it was a bit cumbersome. If we made a mistake, we had to retype the entire SQL statement. So to avoid that, uh, going forward, we will write our SQL statements in a, in a text editor and save that file and then run it from inside uh, SQL, uh, PSQL. So how do we do that? Well, that's what this lesson is uh, for. So let me open my terminal, okay, and let me, uh, well, let me remove it um, since I want to show you how to do it, okay. All right, so what I want to do is to create a directory, and whenever I say directory, I mean a folder. So to create a directory, uh, we say mkdir space and the name of the directory. In this case, I'm going to name it the same name of our course, 1171. And then I want to navigate, uh, I want to go into that directory. So to go into a directory, we use cd, okay, followed by the name of the directory. Okay, so there's nothing in the directory. So let's create another one, another directory. And this time I'm going to call it SQL. Okay, so mkdir space SQL enter. Okay, so inside this SQL directory, we will write all our SQL code. Okay, okay, so let's use Visual Studio Code to do that. So I'm going to click on Visual Studio Code and I'm going to say file open folder and I'm gonna look for this one okay okay all right so this is my SQL uh, folder directory so let's create an empty file so I'm gonna click right here all right, I'm gonna call this file my courses dot SQL Okay, so it's an SQL file. Okay, so let me make a comment. Two dashes. Uh, this is a demo for creating a table uh, using an SQL file. Okay. All right, so that's how we make comments. Okay, so uh, what I like to do, um, I like to always check to see if the table has already been created. Okay, and if it has been created, I like to drop it. And when I say drop, I mean delete it. So I will say drop table if exists, okay? And the name of our table will be my courses. Okay. Okay. Now let's go ahead and create the table. So create table my courses. And now let's enter the column names. Okay. One of them is course ID. And we say after we give the name of the column, we have to give its type. All right, what type is it? Well, it's text. And we need to specify if it can be empty or not. In this case, we don't want it to be empty. So we're telling the DBMS, if, that, if the course ID column is ever empty, give us an error message, okay? Comma, the next column name is created at, so when was this row created? 
but I'm going to use the time stamp uh, function, okay, which just gives us the time, okay, and of course we can give the time zone, Central America, Belize, okay, and this column cannot be null, cannot be empty, okay, and since we want the time to be placed in there by PostgreSQL, right, we won't put in the time, we will tell PostgreSQL to put in the time for us, and so we use the default keyword, and we want it to default to the current time, which is now. So these, the ones in white, are the name of the columns, um, followed by what type the column will contain. So it will contain text or string. Uh, it will contain a time, okay, a time. So timestamp with time zone. All right, the zero just means that uh, we don't want to keep track of fractions of time. Okay, we want exact times, whole numbers. Right. Hours, minutes, seconds. Um, after we have the type, we always specify whether it's null or not null, whether it can be missing or not. Not null, not null. Okay. And in the case of date, uh, since it cannot be missing, we want the system to put in the current date for us, which is the null function. And to do that, we say default now. Okay, and then followed by a semicolon. So this is how we create a table. And notice, since it's in a file, I can save it. And if I want, now I can do the insert. So insert into my courses, okay, which columns? Well, I want to insert into this column. And what do I want to insert into this column? I want to insert the values CMPS, third one, or let's say 1171. Or I'll leave it as 3162 so that we can change it later on. Okay. Okay. Okay, so insert into the name of the table that you're going to insert into, in parentheses, the columns that you're going to insert into, and we specify the values that will be inserted in the specified columns. So for example, if I had five columns in here, I would have to specify five values. Okay, all right, so once again, if by chance the table was already created in our database, uh, that table would be deleted. So if we did not have this command, this statement here, when we run this and DBMS tells us, guess what? There is a table named my courses in there already and nothing else would run. It would just stop, okay? But since we are experimenting, Right? Since we are learning, then this command comes in handy, where it, you can automatically drop it if it's already there. All right? Okay, so let's save this. And so now we will need to open up PSQL. Now, I will say this, and so it's very important. Because the file that contains our code is inside SQL, we need to make sure we first go into SQL. Okay, great. So we have, we are in the directory which contains our file. And so now once we have that, we can go ahead and log in to PostgreSQL. Okay, and so we can say PSQL dash dash uh, host is local host uh, db name is university 
and dash dash the username is university and then let's log in okay. okay so if we use the backslash dt command it tells us what tables are there okay I have a bunch of tables, my stocks, newly acquired stocks, stock prices, but there is no table named my courses. Okay, so the question becomes how do I tell uh, PSQL to read in that file which contains the code that allows me to make a table and then insert into that table? Well, to do that, we will say backslash followed by I, okay? And then we need to specify the name of the file, which is mycourses.sql. So mycourses.sql, okay? Okay, so notice it tells me, okay, look, this table does not exist, so I will skip the command which says drop table. Okay, so in other words, it's telling me that it's not executing line two because there's no table to drop. Okay, all right, so it goes ahead and it creates the table and it inserts one row. To verify that, we could say backslash dt. And notice I have my table, my courses here. Now, let me clear my screen, hold the control key and press L. Okay. So, let's check to see what was stored in our table. So, we will say select all from my courses. Okay. And we get to see the one row that we created. All right. Okay, so um, let's try something here where we will try to load the file again. So I want to load this file again just to show you that it will not drop the table. Okay, so I will say backslash i my courses that sql okay see it told me it dropped it and then it created okay so um we have that okay so whenever i create my whenever i do a query i tend to put each command in capital letters and one on each line so i could say select all and some people will say from my courses, okay? But I don't want you to do it this way. I want you to say select all from my courses, okay? It's easier to read it this way, all right? And then enter. Okay, what would happen if I got rid of this. Okay, let me comment it out. Okay, so it won't run. So let me try loading this table again. Okay. All right, error. The relation, and by the way, when it says relation, it's just another name for table. Okay, already exists. Okay inserting that row. So you notice we now have two rows, okay? The first one was inserted um, like a minute ago, and then this one was inserted just a while ago, all right? 
So that's the importance of um, having the drop statement, right? and it's important because we're experimenting, and we don't. If we don't have it here, then I have to manually go ahead and say drop table, right? Drop table, oh, drop table. Um, my courses, okay. My courses, all right. Um, but to avoid doing all of that work, we just include it in the code at the top. Okay, so there's one more thing. Um, think about that, and there's one more thing I want to show you um, before we finish this uh, lesson. Okay, so one final thing that I want to show you is how we can make this change. So currently, um, we have, okay, I don't want my calendar. Um, currently, we have, um, okay. Oh, I dropped my table. So, <coughs> Let's load it again. Okay. Let's. Okay. So I have one row. Let's see if we can. Uh, make a change. Okay. So. CMPS 3162 is not the right code for us. It's actually 1171. Okay. So if I already have a row of data and I want to make a change to that row, then we use the update command. Okay. So the update command allows us to make changes to records. Okay, and we could specify which records to make changes to, which rows to make changes to. Okay, um, and we'll see that later on. But for now, since we only have one row of data, this change will only affect that one row, and that change is to make 3162 become 1171. And so, to do that, I will say update. Okay. Which table? My courses. Okay. And what do I want to do? I want to set course ID to be CMPS eleven seventy one. Okay. Don't forget the semicolon. All right. SQL statements uh, are required to have a semicolon. All right. So if I check, uh, let me type it out. Okay. Um, now, if I check my table, select all from my courses, I will see that it's no longer CMPS uh, 3162, but it's actually 1171. And before you ask, uh, can I um, do the update uh, using the this approach? Um, update my courses, enter, set course underscore ID. Uh, let's change it back. CMPS 3162, semicolon. Okay. So um, notice uh, update set. Okay, so I use two lines. 
okay, which like I mentioned uh, would be the preferred approach. However, um, we tend to use this double line or triple line or what, how many lines we need approach when we're doing queries, okay, when we're doing selects. Okay, usually when you see something like update or alter, which you will learn later, uh, they tend to be on one line. Okay, they tend to be on one line. Select tend to be on multiple lines. Okay, let's change this back to the right one. Okay, and so select all from my courses. Okay, and there we have it. All right, so that's it uh, for this um, lesson. What you should take away is how we can use files. And notice the files must end with .sql. We can create our SQL code commands inside files so that if we have mistakes in our code, we don't have to retype the whole thing uh, at the command line, at the PSQL prompt. We can just make the change in this file, and this file is permanent, okay? We have it uh, forever. Uh, the commands we type here, they're temporary. When we exit from uh, PSQL, we lose all of it, okay? So we lose all those commands we are typing, all right? So to save the commands, you place them in a file. All right. So I'll leave it here and I will see you in the next lesson.